Hello, kings and queens. You're listening to Affirmations of Excellence, an offering of personal devotions to fuel your week. I am your guide, Ariel Ellis, and I'm so excited to create a space of encouragement and inspiration for each of you. As you begin a new year and a new decade, you are likely seeking to determine how to be your best self and how to discover the excellence within you. The person who lives a life of excellence is one who is willing to do and to dare. As living souls made in God's image, we are not called to mediocrity. We are called to excellence. Excellence is the result of a prosperous, well-lived, and fulfilled life. And this podcast is for those who sense a royal calling on your life. Those who are learning to hear God's voice and clarity and need motivation for the assignment. And who want to live out his calling with excellence. Each week, we'll explore themes of everyday life and talk through ways to escape mediocrity and find true fulfillment. We are still at the beginning of 2020, and whether you're listening to this in January or much later in December, the opportunity to do a heart check is always worth taking advantage of. When I say heart check, I mean identify what is in and on your heart and why. To pursue excellence, searching our heart and making our desires free and pure is a fundamental approach. Our first two episodes of the podcast were about opening up the year with intentions around prayer and fasting and dedicating our goals to God. So to continue with that theme, this episode is all about desires. Every human heart alive has a desire of their heart. They aspire to be, they hope to become, they strive to do something that is in their heart. Many of us are longing for more. We dare to dream. We hold the promise of prosperity. And each of us has a deep, heartfelt desire. But how do we actually receive the desires of our hearts? Let's dive in here today. Kings and queens, be sure to share, rate, and subscribe as you listen today. If we are reflecting on 2020, there's a significance that we can unpack around the number 20. In biblical context, 20 is a number that represents completion. It marks the end of enduring and signals the cycle of fulfillment. It represents restoration and redemption after a sufficient period of waiting. In Hebrew, the number 20 shows up as a letter or as the word kaf, spelled K-A-F or K-A-P-H. The word by definition represents the palm of a hand. It symbolizes a protective covering or the potential of receiving. It foreshadows a season of experiencing an overwhelming sense of God's hand being open. Open for increased generous blessings in response to a season of waiting or longing. We are all waiting and longing for something. This is naturally how the desires of our hearts take shape. The heart is capable of hosting and manifesting many things, words, deeds, manipulations, attempts. Excellence itself is a heart issue. The core of excellence is rooted in the desires of our hearts. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for out of it springs the issues of life. Everything you do flows from your heart. Every decision, every word, and every thought. And God He searches every crevice of your heart. He knows what you like, feel, need, and want. He knows your curiosities, your wonderings, and your longings. Do you know God's desire for you? It's the same for all of us, and at the same time, it's different. He wants to give us what we need. He wants to bless us. He wants to be our guide, our shepherd, our savior. He wants our unrelenting praise, worship, and commitment. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Psalm 84 and 11. He adores you and he only asks that you adore him back. We cannot maximize the desires God has for us if we cannot minimize the things that hinder us from excellence. He wants to find excellence in you because he is seeking to bless you. He wants to dwell in a place of progress. He wants to operate in a space that is prepared for the highest levels. But he also hears you 
and sees you like no one else can, not even yourself. So what is driving the desires of your heart? What are your motives? What toxic things in your heart could be blocking your blessings? Have you been desiring the wrong things? Have you been approaching your desires with mediocrity? Have you been holding your desires with a sense of entitlement? What are you compromising and what are you surrendering? Take a second to think about it. I am guilty of looking too far ahead instead of spending more time in the present moment. I wouldn't say that I'm a planner. I'd say that I'm a visionary. I have these lofty goals and desires. I write them down, pray and meditate over them, as I said in the first two episodes, and nine times out of 10, they come to pass. And there's nothing wrong with practicing those routines. God truly does want us to map out the intentions of our heart and handle the resources he gives us like time, people, and ideas with the utmost care. He tells Moses in his word to write the vision and make it plain. He tells us that the lack of vision can stall our future and the lives of our children for generations to come. He holds tomorrow and gives us enough hope to dream about its arrival. While having vision and making plans are not wrong, they are the kind of practices we can get carried away with and that can disconnect the desires of our hearts. In Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, we find, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. This, kings and queens, is a promise. If we believe that God has plans for us, can we decide to commit, submit, and permit all of our hopes, dreams, and ideas to him? I mean, honestly, with all the noise this world has about hashtag goals, can we commit to staying focused on what his plans are and allow our plans to come in alignment with his will. I know I'm just as bad as you are, or maybe even worse. You found yourself being so blessed that you think as long as you have the right idea and the right heart, as long as your plans are filled with positivity and progression and you mean no one any harm, there's no reason God wouldn't bless you with the desired outcomes. But remember, kings and queens, his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Isaiah 55 and 9. This is why coming into alignment with his will should be the best approach to making plans and casting vision because he thinks so much bigger and so much better than we do. Your heart should be so surrendered that for a moment, just for a moment, you are willing to delete the checklist, trash that 12-month planner, tuck away the vision board, and start over fresh by asking God, What is your will for me in this stage of my life? And what desires should I hope to pursue in the years ahead? The great thing about God is that for those of us who seek him, our desires actually come from him. One of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 37 and 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let's attack that scripture for a second. The promise is true, but there's a condition. The condition is that we delight in him, commit to him, and make our ways pleasing to him. This doesn't mean that we can have anything and everything we want all the time, but it does mean that if we delight in him, he will change our desires to things that we want and we long for so that they glorify him. And it's those desires that he will satisfy To make our way pleasing, it means our thoughts and actions should match up. We have the ability to know God's will and knowing that requires that we ask him and search his word for answers. Every day he has to see us seeking him and striving to obey him. It should be apparent in how we interact with our loved ones in the words that we speak and the way we do our jobs. We want him to be pleased with our decisions, our time management and our relationships. The only way to please God is to obey him. The only way to obey him is to know what he wants us to do. The only way to know what he wants us to do is to talk to him and to spend time with him. And when we do that, our desires take shape. He begins to show us and reveal to us what he wants. Those wants are placed on our hearts and they begin to appear as desires. 
So not only do the desires manifest as blessings because he found us pleasing, we discover that these desires were actually the very things he wanted for us all along. Consider this, kings and queens. Our desires should be so innately in sync with the heart of God that we have no interest in anything that he specifically has not willed toward us. There are times that God has plans and through your relationship with him and by way of prayer, he may reconsider a thing that wasn't on the table. For instance, Hezekiah was knocking on death's door and he prayed in faith for God to give him more time. God remembered him, reconsidered and added a few more years to Hezekiah's life where he lived as a healed man without sickness. We've all heard those stories or had a loved one who was predicted by doctors to die but God allowed them a little more time on earth. Those stories, some extreme and some not as much, are very real and show God's preeminent power to work a miracle and answer a fervent prayer or just simply to change his mind. He is God, so he can do that. And I'm so glad that he can. But there are times when our way is pleasing and the desires longings and wishes of our heart that we believe he placed there don't come to pass. Those plans don't work out. That vision doesn't come true. That loved one dies anyway. That loan was denied. That project fell through. And it's so tough to trust, wait, and obey over and over again when the results don't come as you expected. So what happens when a deep desire goes unmet? Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is the tree of life. Desires unfulfilled can make us painfully anxious. Longings that go unaddressed can literally cause us to be bitter and angry. We're living in his will and praying according to his spirit. Why isn't he answering? So how should we faithfully wait with unmet desires? When God doesn't give you the desires of your heart, He may be giving you the desires of your heart. He may be using the absence of the gift that you're praying for to reset your eyes on the giver instead. Unmet desires and the pain associated with them forces us into a deep surrender and humility before God. They remind us that our true hope is in him and how he supplies all of our needs in every moment in time. God transcends time. We live in time, but he lives in eternity. Whatever your desire is, God is already in eternity. Time was created by God for our management. Time was also created by God for our appreciation. Though we take time for granted, God does not need time. We do. God does not stop or start. He does not come or go. He is. He is always present, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So when you get a revelation or a blessing based on your heart's desire, its timing is perfect, no matter when he delivers it. The demands of life can get in the way of our relationship with God, and we consistently have to check our hearts to ensure that our desires are pure. By his mercy, we can increase our desire for him. He's able to boost your delight in him by revealing more of himself to you. When you delight yourself in him, he will grant your desires. And I promise and can speak from experience that you will have a flood of peace, satisfaction, fulfillment, joy, and enjoyment like never before. When you handle your desires with excellence, you'll often do a heart check. When you do a heart check, you'll know that you shouldn't go through every door you see. You shouldn't take advantage of every opportunity presented to you. You shouldn't accept every job that's offered to you. You shouldn't date everyone that asks you out. Remember, the enemy can arrange circumstances too. So you need to ask God for direction when it comes to your desires. God will complete those things that concern you. As you surrender those concerns to God, they become his responsibility. He wants you to see what he can do in you and through you. He will complete, fulfill, perfect, and bring those desires to pass. My prayer for you is that the Lord will align your desires according to the ways of his heart. May you want what he wants and may you seek that which is consistent with his will. Kings and queens, God wants you to throw out your mental cap and put on your heart hat. You have the power to shape your destiny through your desires. Use this episode as a seed if you need to. 
May it be planted. May you hide it in your heart, water it, and believe it. May it harvest, manifest, and bloom accordingly. Now that we've acknowledged excellence in our desires, let's pursue these affirmations for the week. Say this with me. I am willing to attract all that I desire beginning here and now. All that I desire flows to me and therefore I am filled with gratitude. May God guide my prayers, my actions, my words, and my desires. My deepest desire is to make my heart available to God. I will consistently delight myself in the Lord. Every unanswered desire is about to come to pass. Kings and queens, may you be fully equipped to master excellence in the world this week. Go be excellent and don't forget your crowns.